Good morning, children. So we are again back with the chapter weather and climate, but we are going to learn something new today. In learning about weather and climate, we have come to know about several features of the weather, namely temperature, pressure, wind, etc. In the last class, we have talked about temperature and how we can measure it with the help of a sixes maximum and minimum thermometer. Today, we are going to learn something further. Today, we are going to learn about a Stevenson screen. So, a Stevenson screen is not a screen. It is actually a box. And this is a very common feature in a weather station. It is used to keep thermometers inside the box. You can see it. It is white in color. Why is it white in color? Because it does not allow the sun's heat to enter. Had it been black in color or some other dark color, then the sun's heat would have entered the Stevenson screen and would not have given a proper record of the temperature. Here is how it looks from inside. There are several instruments kept inside the Stevenson screen. It has got an automatic thermometer, a thermograph to record the temperature continuously. You can see louvers over here so that this box which is kept outside away from trees and buildings do not get heated inside. These louvers help in the proper circulation of air. Now take a closer look of the Stevenson screen, how it looks from inside. So in this Stevenson screen, we have got a wet bulb thermometer which measures the humidity, a maximum thermometer, a minimum thermometer, a dry bulb thermometer which will measure the temperature. So you can see how the Stevenson screen looks from inside. The Stevenson screen is always kept about one meter above the ground so that the heat of the ground does not affect the temperature or the thermometers which are measuring the temperature of the region. So these are the few things which needs to be kept in mind when a Stevenson screen is installed. It should be white in color so that it reflects the heat. It should be kept one meter above the ground so that it does not get heated from the heat which is being released from the ground. It is kept away from trees and buildings so that it does not record the shade temperature and it is louvered so that there is enough circulation of air inside and it is white in color. Now, we all know that the atmosphere 
which is around the earth exerts pressure on it. You can see it, how the atmosphere is exerting a pressure from all sides on the earth. And air has got weight. And this weight exerts a pressure on the earth's surface. So atmospheric pressure can be defined as the force exerted by a column of air due to its weight at a particular place on the earth's surface. It varies from place to place and time to time with height above the sea level. So what does this mean? Places which are on the plains will have a pressure which will be higher than the pressure which is being exerted on the mountains. That means as we go high up, the pressure becomes less. And as we come down towards the plains, the pressure becomes high. Maximum pressure is found at the sea level because the sea level is considered to be the lowest level closest to the ground. Now pressure is measured with the help of a mercury barometer. You can see it on your screen. This mercury barometer consists of a beaker full of mercury and there is an inverted test tube which is one meter long. So this inverted glass tube is one meter long. On top there is vacuum. Whenever the pressure increases, mercury surges inside this tube and this tube is graduated which helps in determining how much of air pressure is being exerted at a particular time. This is how a mercury barometer actually looks like because it is a huge glass tube. So it has to be kept very well so that it does not break easily. So it is attached to a wooden plank. These days, instead of this mercury barometer, we use an aneroid barometer. An aneroid barometer is more handy and is now more commonly in use. It does not have any liquid and it is vacuum from inside. It's, you can see it. It's a vacuum metal box that expands and contracts depending upon the low and high pressure respectively. There's a pointer which moves over a scale. You can see the scale. This is the pointer. It moves over a scale and it indicates how much of pressure is being exerted. This 
barometer is always attached to a barograph which continuously records or monitors the atmospheric pressure. Now you all are familiar with what is wind. When air moves, we call it wind. And air will always move from a place which is having a high atmospheric pressure to a low atmospheric pressure. So air moves always from a high pressure region to a low pressure region. So what is wind? It can be defined as the horizontal movement of air from one place to another. Now wind has got several directions. You can see it. Here we have north and south, east and west. Wind can move in a northeasterly direction or it can be more towards the east. So it is east, northeasterly, east. It can be in a southwesterly direction or it can be more oriented towards the south. So it is south, southwest and so on. So we can see that wind has got different direction. Now the instrument which is used to measure the direction of the wind is known as a wind vane. It consists of an arrow pointing towards the direction of the wind. The wind gets its name from the direction from where it is blowing. For example, if the wind is blowing from a westerly direction, it will be called a westerly wind. The wind is blowing from the west, the wind will be known as a westerly wind. If the wind is blowing from the southwest, it will be known as the southwesterly wind. So it will always take the name from the direction from where it is coming. Winds help in carrying the warmth or coldness of a place from one place to another. They also help in bringing rainfall as they carry moisture from the water bodies. I hope I have made myself clear about wind. So let's now move on to the next topic of discussion and that is an anemometer. So this is an anemometer. It is an instrument that measures the speed of the wind. It consists of cups and an indicator. The speed of the wind is measured in knots. One knot is equal to one nautical hour. It has got several. You can see over here that it has got cups, cups like structure. So when the wind is moving very fast, this instrument begins to move very fast and below it we have got 
a digital clock which determines or records the speed of the wind. This anemometer is attached to an anemograph which helps in continuous measurement and recording of the speed of the wind on a graph paper. All these instruments you can find in a weather station. And these instruments help in predicting and forecasting the weather, which help all of us to know what kind of a weather we are likely to have. So that is what we have enough time for today. Thank you.